Good afternoon. So my eight-year-old son asked me a very, very cool question last night. He said, Dad, what is a recession? We're going to talk about that next. So one of the reasons that this question got me particularly excited is because I love financial literacy and I love educating um, everyone, including kids, about the importance of being financially savvy. Um, so if you're in that same respect, please subscribe to this channel. Please like this page and please share it. I produce videos on a weekly basis about financial literacy and providing market updates. There are several key aspects to, to note about a recession. Technically, a recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Now that's negative gross domestic product. So that's saying that the economy is receding or has a negative growth over two consecutive quarters. So what is GDP, gross domestic product? Uh, GDP is the total market value or total monetary value of all the finished goods and products that are produced within an economy. So all, if you add up all of the manufacturing, all the sales, all the things that are taking place as the final goods in this economy, that is GDP. So you think about input costs, such as the steel or any other oil or energy that is used to produce a final good, that would not be included in initial GDP because that is not um, the final goods and the final product. So you're looking for things such as the cars, trucks when they're sold. You're looking for um, the final products that you can buy from a grocery store. That makes up GDP. And that is aggregated data that is collected across the whole country, or across any economy, any country, over a given period of time. Typically it's done on a three month period of time over a quarterly basis. And that is measured versus the growth from the previous quarter. And that's how you determine if the growth has been negative or positive. So if we can remember from the last recession that we saw, the Great Recession in the United States, there were several things that took place. One of the things we saw was a significantly low um, employment rate or a high unemployment rate. Employment rate got to nearly 10% in this country during the last recession. And that's something that you typically see across all recessions. Additionally, manufacturing numbers, such as the Institute of Supply Management, the ISM manufacturing and sales um, data, starts to weaken a little bit. Inventories start to grow for suppliers and manufacturers. So you'll have growing inventory, weaker manufacturing data and sales, and those are some of the things that typically prelude a recession. Now we discussed previously about the yield curve inversion. That's typically a sign that's used in the investment management industry to uh, read where we are in the business cycle. And typically when you have the two year um, yielding a higher rate than the 10 year treasury, and this is on the bonds aspect, um, you're forecasting slower growth in the future. And whenever you forecast slower growth in the future, it creates a dim picture, a dim light for the growth of the overall economy. So when you feature those multiple things together, such as um, a unemployment rate that is rising, slow manufacturing numbers, slow data, um, growing inventories because companies are not able to sell their product as well as some of the other nuances in the economy that are entangled with monetary policy, such as the interest rates and the yield curve inversion, those are pretty much signs that we're heading in towards a recession. So currently where we are in our economy, we are in the latter stages of this current um, business cycle. We're starting to realize those inventory numbers change for a lot of companies. And we're also starting to see a shift in some of the data that I mentioned before, such as the manufacturing and the sales numbers of um, many corporations within the United States. We've witnessed the yield curve invert. 
we have seen an inversion across the yield curve um, and across the middle of the year yield curve with the two-year um, yielding higher than the 10-year Treasury. As of this recording right now, the yield curve is not inverted at the two and the 10-year, but it is starting to flatten out and it is showing signs of weakness. Additionally, we are in full employment in this country right now. Our employment rate is right at 3.7%, which is a good thing. But it does yield to the fact that we are at a point where there will not be a mass hiring or a, a large allotment of new jobs that will be added to the market that will further fuel um, the growth of the economy. So overall, Warwickshire Advisors, we don't forecast us going into a recession right now, but we do see um, a soft spot coming in the near future in the near 18 months or so especially if we do not get any reconciliation between the trade war between the United States and China. So essentially, a recession is very easily defined as it comes to a textbook definition of what it is. It's simply just two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Some of the aspects of the recession and some of the things that we see on a daily basis during a recession are some of those things I think my son was alluding to and what he was asking for. If you have any questions about the economy, the market, or investing in general, please reach out to me directly. I would love to work with you and help you reach your financial goals. As always, we are a wealth management and investment management firm, so if you have any questions or if you're looking for a firm to help build a portfolio for you for retirement and for your legacy, please reach, us, reach out to us at investments at warwickshore.com.